Hey everyone, thanks for watching this walkthrough video here. This is going to be a walkthrough of 18-wheeler American Pro Trucker for the Sega Dreamcast. One of my all-time favorite Sega games. Uh, and one of my all-time favorite Sega consoles, I should say. And so, you know, the first thing you'll notice is if you play this in the arcade, it's very similar to the arcade version. Extremely similar. And I always prefer the arcade version personally, but nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and take a look at it for the Dreamcast. And, you know, obviously the the, the the obvious difference being um, that you, you're playing this on a regular Dreamcast controller and not with the steering wheel attachment. So obviously that'll that, depending on how you view it. I actually thought that playing it with the wheel steering wheel was a lot easier. But um, nonetheless, you have to go ahead. And you, you saw what just happened there. You got to choose your truck, whatever handles best for you. Basically, I've beaten this game with all different vehicles before. Um, so you choose your truck, then you it tells you you're going to go to Key West. You can't really choose your transport here, although in later uh, levels you will be able to. And now the key here, guys, is really you, you want to slipstream your opponent. You are, you are racing against another trucker, and you have, to, um, you, know, you have to beat them in the level, and you also obviously, uh, you know, obviously have to beat the timer because you are timed, just like most of these arcade-style racing games were at the time. You, you were timed on everything. So there's your time limit, upper left-hand part of the screen. Now, notice in the upper right, that's that represents the health of your tanker. All right, so you want to go ahead and maintain that, obviously, so you get you maximize your score at the end. Now, notice also the um, you're, you have to get used to shifting gears here. You want to shift into high. You notice I did around 74 kilometers per hour. That's probably the best one for the truck I'm using. I'm using that purple truck. I don't know what it is uh, exactly for the others. I, I use this one mostly. Um, so notice right off the bat I'm ahead, but but you also have to slipstream. Again, like I was just saying, slipstreaming will maximize your speed here. So that is your friend. You can slipstream different trucks too, not just your opponent, which makes things really, really interesting and a re big reason why I like this game. So right here, this is you know stage one, obviously. I, I just stayed straight here. There was uh, there was no real need for me to uh, make a left turn here. I stayed straight. I saw that that you know van there. You can you can hit those vans that say time plus three to it tack on three seconds to your limit, your time limit, which is really cool. And yeah, if you fall behind like I just did there, you know it's to your benefit to slipstream. That's that's really the main part of this game is making sure you're in the right place at the right time in order to be able to slipstream. Now, I lost a little bit of health there on the fuel tanker. It's not a big deal. If you can keep it above 10 grand, I would say you're probably okay if you're going for maximizing. If you're in a tournament, you're going to probably want to keep it above 11 grand. I play, uh, 11 grand. I play with people who are very competitive in this game in the arcades, and they and they almost always come back above 11,500, and I'm barely above that right now. So that's just the health, like I said, of the tanker. And the first stage isn't really all that it's not all that complicated. I didn't even do much slip, streep slip streaming there. But you notice you get the reward, of course, based on the health of the tanker itself. Then you notice there's a time bonus based on how much time I had left as well. So that those are a few factors that go into... Uh, that go into calculating your score. Now, there will also be these side bonus parking challenges. I'm not sure if I recorded each one of these, but notice that Basically, you get you get a bonus. You get a bonus for parking in a spot, <laughs> essentially. Um, it, it, it might not sound like much, but it's, you know, it, you still, I mean, you will get penalized for hitting other objects in the way. So you want to do well in this. And you still want to leave a lot of time left on the clock, like I just did there. And you have to come to a complete stop, as you know, saw what I did there in the, in the green box there. And, of course, you get a rank. You get a time bonus. If you hit anything... You you will see your cumulative penalty at the end. I think it's like a hundred dollars per item, and but obviously if you hit four or five items, that adds up. Um, so they give you they throw you a horn. They give you a horn to unlock that you can use in your next uh, in your next commute. So now we're gonna go ahead and go into stage two here. Stage two of this game, which is St. Petersburg to Dallas, and you get an option here. You can either go with the car transport, or you saw the other one over there, which looked like a a bunch of logs. And a bunch of a bunch of wood. I, I chose to go with the I chose to go with the car transport, which is a little bit easier. Probably could have done either one. I've done both before, um, so wasn't anything new to me. But no, nonetheless, we'll go with the we'll go with the car transporter here, and 
you know, again, very similar. But I just want to go on and show you kind of the path I took because, you know, obviously you want to also take the path that's going to be quickest, right? Because uh, obviously whatever you can navigate best is the way to go. So, yeah, notice, again, with the gears here, I'm waiting until about 75 kilometers per hour. That's like the magic number there. And then before I shift into high. I don't know what's with all the Denny's along the way here. It's, I don't know if Denny's, <laughs> I don't know if they, they, uh, they have you know certain copyrights here that the developers paid Denny's for. Right? It's big in the game. I, I don't know. But um, but anyway, so again, notice that big slipstream at the beginning there. That's, I mean, that's huge. That's crucial because look at how much of a jump I have on my opponent right now, and I still have that transporter in perfect, uh, in perfect health, uh, which is good. Which is good. So again, I chose the dirt road here. You could have chose either either way, really. And um, I just thought this was the easiest way to do. I knew that the timing van was there, and of course, I hit that had tech on three seconds there. And it's just worked out really well. And I'm not even slipstreaming here. I just got such a head start with the at that with that big slipstream at the beginning there, as you saw. And I'm still averaging about 100 kilometers an hour. I slowed down a little bit here around the bend here. I'm in the low to low 90s, you know, upper 80s. Or just I don't know where it happens. It uh, doesn't even hit that. No. There's one point where I slow down. It's not here apparently. And even now I'm slipstreaming. So there's huge tornado coming through. Don't worry about it. You cannot. Will not affect you. It'll slide, swipe your opponent if anything, and you just keep cruising here. Like I said, saw what I did there. Made a right turn at the tracks. Another plus three time bonus there from the van, and just keep going. Just keep plowing ahead there. So again, another fairly uh, straightforward stage here. Not, not a whole lot you can, uh, you can really mess up here on. Again, unless, again, unless you're not, unless you don't get that huge bonus uh, or that huge slipstream at the beginning. At some point, you got to do it. That's going to maximize your speed coming out of the gate there. So if you can start off really fast at the beginning, you should be all right. And from there, it's basically just not crashing. Basically, staying, uh, staying straight there. But you notice it's a little tricky. When, when it comes to backing up, you will have to back up into spots. I'm not sure if I recorded that uh, in these parking parking bonus challenges. Um, but in which case, uh, especially if, if you're on the arcade, it would be easier. You just flip a, a switch or whatever, and you could e instantly go from low to high. On the, on the Dreamcast controller, it's a little bit different. I even forget what the button was for uh, from low to high. But I believe it's like R or L or, um, I'm sorry, B or A uh, to flip from low to high, respectively. Um so, you know, you're going to have to obviously figure out what you need in order to get into the high gear, which you will need for, obviously, once you hit 75 kilometers per hour. And vice versa, you'd also have to shift down if you are slowing down. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that principle in this next stage here. We're coming on to stage three. This is Dallas to Las Vegas. This is where things get a little bit tough, and I actually chose the toughest transport. You notice how the, the more difficult the transport, the more weight it has the more that you will earn at the end of the stage. So now this one a little bit more trickier because you are up in the mountains here, or at least you're in, a, you're in elevated land here. So you will notice how I will have to shift down in order to, in, in order to quickly accelerate from the lower speeds before I uh, get back up to around 75 kilometers per hour. So, so again, initially, you know, starting out just like any other trip here, And not much to say really right here. I mean, like, I get other than just slipstream at the beginning. And so now I'm up on high. And I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere here in the in the desert. And there's my rival. Don't worry about the rival getting a head start on you. There's really no cause for concern because he, again, everything's on a program, right? So naturally they give him like a 10-second lead time for whatever reason. If that, it's probably more like 7 or 8 seconds. And uh, depending on how you look at the speed and everything. And I took a little bit of damage there. Not a big deal, though. So I ended up going right here. Just watch those big uh, those, you know, those big stones falling out, obviously. But here here we see it again. I'm going around the corner here. But again, look at I'm reducing speed here. My speed's going down because the road's slowing me down. So I have to shift down to low, which is what I just did there. I shifted into a low gear. So I shift into low gear. And then coming out of the checkpoint, it's downhill now. So you want to go high again. And again, if this, it's, it would be the exact same thing if uh, if I were to get you know sideswiped or if I were to crash coming down here as well. I'd want to go into low before I 
before I can work my way up to high again. So, you know, again, doing pretty well here. There, you find a couple of vans on the side that you can that you can knock out for for additional time bonuses. But again, really, you know, once you know where to go, once you kind of get a feel for the truck, it's not really that tough. And I didn't have a whole time left, a lot of time here left, if anything. But I just made it, so I was happy. I don't think I had any time left. <laughs> but uh, but that'll work. And again, my I, I mean the, the uh, my load is pretty much in, in, in good condition here. I don't get the time bonus, but I get ahead of the rival bonus for five grand. And that's big too if you're looking for score. You wanna obviously beat your opponent if you wanna maximize your scoring performance. Certainly if you're in the arcade playing this you would want you'd want such a thing to happen. Um, but and uh, again, I mean there's this is just the arcade mode. And so there's only four stages here. So this is this is the final stage right here. And I ended up <laughs> going for the uh, taking the trolleys. Figure in San Francisco, I like I like uh, kind of looking at the trolleys, which is kind of cool. So yeah, I ended up transporting the trolleys here. They're worth wh whatever it was, 22 grand or whatever, a lot more than what whatever the first one was worth. So this is the most challenging one. But again, if you watch this video, you should have absolutely no problem. Again, same principles are going to apply. You're going to want to keep it in low and then go to high. But this one, as you, as most of you probably watching this know, live in the U.S., you know that San Francisco is really hilly. And so putting trucks on hills is always, uh, always going to be a challenge. So this is by far the most difficult challenge. But, it, but you can master it in pretty much no time, like I say. If you, know the, if you know your vehicle, it shouldn't really be a big deal. So I'm already in high gear here. And yes, there is a separate gear for reverse. It's another button on. Uh, actually, it's I believe you just continue to hit low gear. You can swap. It's only a few buttons that you use to swap between all three. And I believe it's B to go down to uh, to go down to reverse, uh, which you would only have to do in parking challenges. I think I cut one of those out. I'm not sure. I either cut one out or it didn't record for whatever reason. I don't know. But there is a, a parking challenge in here that kind of um, makes you go into reverse, makes you throw it into reverse. Otherwise, you won't, you know, you won't uh, pass the challenge. So here we go again, slipstreaming like there's no tomorrow, uh, trying to maximize those time vans, hitting those time vans to tack on more time to my limit here, and just plowing ahead. I mean, I, I actually at first, the first time I played this, I didn't, I didn't do it. I didn't finish it. But um, because I, I made that turn there, you just want to plow ahead, basically. Don't make the turn. Do what I just did. Stay straight on that ramp or on that highway right there. And then fall down into the ground. Into, right into the checkpoint. And just keep going, you know. And, again, a good a good way to kind of gauge where you're at is if you're 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 fairly close to your rival. You don't have to be right on top of them. But if you're within a good, uh, I would say within 10 seconds, you should be all right. But you always want to kind of keep that, at least keep it close because... If anything, for the sake of time, and it's also important to know that your rival himself might not even be able to beat, might not even be able to beat the time limit, which is always kind of interesting, considering he, uh, you know, he's he's usually ahead of you, and he, sometimes he can't even beat the time limit. So you're obvi it's you against the clock basically, and then worry about the rival second. I just worry about him because I want to beat him in order to get it, like I say, as much score as I can. And this worked out very well for me. I did very well on this one. So, you know, once you, again, once you know the vehicle, you should be all right. It should not really be uh, an issue at all. And and those time vans certainly help things as well. So, yeah, guys, so this, that, this has been a walkthrough of 18-wheeler American Pro Trucker. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And like I say, we'll be putting up additional parking bonus challenge footage in the next couple weeks here so please stay tuned and as always go check out my other channel as well which is that nes fan so take care guys timothy little aka tim the gamer 13 on this channel signing off for now so and then at the end here you just get these you know <laughs> these little credits there which is kind of cool especially if you're watching this on a big screen in the arcade it's always cool but um yeah i really enjoy this game I've been playing it for many years, like I say, at the arc on the in the arcades. I've been playing it, and you know, recently picked up a controller and, with the Dreamcast and started playing it 
on the Dreamcast, and they're both both versions are great. Um, you know, it took me a little while to master the Dreamcast controls per se. Same concept though, you you know, handling the rig, controlling the gears, being knowing the the vehicle. So, hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough, guys. That'll be all. I am signing off for now. You guys take care. Yeah, there you see at the end. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching.